Well, thanks, thanks guys for coming along. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to uh, expand on what the coaching group will be for 2024 20, onwards. Uh, so my assistant coaches will be uh, Zane Hilton, who will be predominantly in charge of uh, set piece in the forwards. Uh, he'll be ably assisted by a guy called Jonathan Fisher. Uh, Jonathan is a, a wonderful young talent from um, England uh, and is a forwards expert in his own right. Uh, and we'll look after the breakdown in forward skills. And we also have Brad Davis. Brad Davis I've worked with for a number of years as well. And he'll be mainly looking after defence and backs uh, and integrating a lot with me, uh, overseeing all strategy and the attack part of the game. Uh, this coaching group gives me a chance to uh, possibly get on the ground and running quickly, uh, mainly because I've worked with two of them for a number of years with London Irish and they're joining me, and Zane brings a lot of experience in terms of what he's learned at international rugby with Tonga, what he's learned in terms of his uh, time at the Rebels, uh, so he knows super rugby, and also working with a lot of different nationalities that would join him in the Japanese competition that he's been coaching as well. So we have a broad experience across the group that allows us to hit the ground and running. It's important to also mention Dale Robertson, who is currently the academy coach uh, with Paul Carrozza, it's a great program here, the academy system and the pathway. Uh, Dale will move into another type of role, still running, the, uh, coaching the academy. However, he's going to be closely, closely working with us. I want to be able to connect the systems that we put in place, the Reds way, really tightly with the academy and down the pathway. And Dale will become a massively important part of that whole program. So it's an integrated, cohesive group of coaches. Uh, some of us know each other. I've had the pleasure to work with Dale more recently, uh, and we're just excited about moving forward and, and, uh, and uh, seeing what we can do in the future. Uh, if you have any questions, fire away, please. Thank you. Um, I suppose, you know, you as a head coach, having a, a couple of familiar faces there is going to uh, always uh, help for a bit of synergy. Yeah, it certainly does. Uh, you know, sometimes you, you, you get a group of new people together. I've been out of Australian rugby for 16 years. That's where Zane's important for me and Dale. Um, but in terms of putting systems together and, and, and the way you like to play and the philosophies and principles, uh, two guys that I've been working with for four or five years now certainly helps to get that up and running quickly. Now, this is not a cut and paste or a copy and paste. You know, we need to make sure we know what works with the players we have here. And already I can see some differences we have the way that I have coached before. But we will have a progressive, aggressive style of rugby. Uh, we want to go out there and excite, uh, but it'll be built on really good, strong foundations of what, what serves the game, our set piece, our defence, you know, good skills and all those things. But those coaches know how we work uh, and we'll integrate with how it works with the group of players we have here. And Zane and Dale will bring their own influence into how we, we play the game as well. Um, you mentioned some of the differences. Could you um, expand on that a little bit? Differences in? Um, in regards to, you know, the systems you're bringing oh, in. Oh, yes, place, definitely, yeah. Well, I, I, what I, I think it is, sometimes you might have, uh, your game can be built more around your tight five, and then, then you're building a progressive game around that. Sometimes it's built on your back three, might be the exciting element of your game. We certainly had that at London Irish, but here I can see the same sort of clues there with the type of players that we have in those positions. And also your nine and ten have a big bearing on how you play. Now, Tate's getting some magnificent experience, isn't he? Um, as a leader and with the Wallabies, so he'll come back. I'll have the time to build a relationship with him, as the coaches will, and we'll see how that can work best with us. Um, and obviously we've got you know, Lawson, Harry and uh, Tom as really good number 10s that we can work with as well. So there's a lot of things like that that you work out and say what will work really well and what will they bring that will make it even better. Uh, you know, you've been here for a while now. Um, uh, not an extensive time, but within that time you've had and the players you've looked at, um, you know, what's your feeling at the moment in terms of what um, um, can be produced from this uh, core group of players? Uh, yeah, I said at the beginning there's a, a, a really strong foundation that's been put in place um, you know, from Brad's term here. Uh, I want to do that justice and, and build on some, stro some st strong qualities there. Uh, I've been really impressed that with their hunger to, to learn new things. Uh, uh, how do they advance themselves? Um, you know, had a lot of time with uh, Liam, uh, obviously being a co-captain co here, Liam Wright. So just getting a feel for the place. Uh, so those types of things are important um, in terms of understanding the playing group as they are. Uh, I'll get a chance in the next few weeks with the Challenger Series coming up to work more closely with players as they come into the training group. Um, you know, 
we'll have one of the local club coaches in Keane O'Connor joining us with that. We'll have Liam Wright will actually run the line out in, in uh, Moore, so he's going to learn a little bit about each other there. And uh, even uh, Josh Campbell will, will also be throwing his bit in with some back starters. So I'll get to know the group a little bit deeper that way as well. But I've been really impressed with um, you know, the way they've engaged with me conversation-wise. Um, I will challenge them. Um, I guess they'll challenge me back, but uh, I'm excited about the group for sure. Uh, Jonathan Fisher, um, with the breakdowns, um, that's one of the most important positions in terms of an assistant coach, do you see, in terms of um, maybe getting the Reds to move up that ladder a little bit more? Certainly. Uh, you know, the game's built around that area for sure, in a lot of ways. I guess from that perspective, you know, he has expertise right across the game, but he'll get it right into that area, and that'll tap into what I do with the attack. It's massively important. And Zane also has some really good contact experience. I like my coaches to work across the disciplines, so he will have good support from myself and uh, Zane, and he will also support other areas of the game as well. So that breakdown area is going to be critical, you know, when you, particularly when you talk about the Kiwi teams, uh, who are going to be our major, major competition. We need to make sure that we, <coughs> excuse me, um, are up to speed in that area. Um, so, yep, I've got uh, no, no qualms about who I've got looking after that for sure, but uh, it's, a, it's a coaching team effort. Just... Um, so, Sorry, with, um, yeah. Northern Hemisphere rugby, uh, North versus South, etc. Um, I suppose with professionalism, right now, 20, 25 years into it, and the rising standards, what's happened over there, and we can see maybe in some of the, the results, you know, against Australia. Um, with your knowledge of that Northern Hemisphere rugby, are there components of that which you really think can be brought across into, I suppose, more so specifically the Reds, to enhance their style of play? I certainly think uh, there are some things we can bring across that are traditionally strong points up there, you know, from the set piece, uh, definitely kicking from the nine a little bit more. Uh, we tend to kick from the 10 a lot more here in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, I don't think any of them are better than the other, but it's how it integrates with your plan and we're all on the same page. The most important thing is to be aligned about what you do. Uh, although they do bring some of those strengths and, and those things are coming through in Northern Hemisphere, there is a lot of variety in their game building up there. And I think that's the thing that's really important in Northern Hemisphere rugby. They aren't just a one-trick pony anymore. Ireland can play from set piece right through to the back line and play well. You've seen it with France. They're doing the same. Um, so there's a lot of variety that's coming into the game. So I've had, I guess I've had the opportunity with my experience in a number of different con countries and competitions and working with very, a lot of different coaches and working up to probably 14, 15 different nationality of players to be able to garner the best I can from them and see what can work. And uh, as long as I haven't got 15 things to do and we get the two or three things like, like the breakdown set piece and our defence, uh, we'll be in a good place. But there are some things that we can bring forward here, but essentially it has to be what we make. It can't be just cut and paste from somewhere else. That's just my philosophy. It has to work here. Uh, and that's my mission right through to Christmas once we get all the group together to hopefully understand what that is and then we can go into the new year uh, in a good place, hopefully. Just with the strengthening the pathways program with Dale, is there anything you've seen at the various other clubs you've worked with that they've done really well that maybe the Reds might could tap into a little bit better and really strengthen? Yeah, I think uh, I'm passionate about the coaching pathway. Um, it's something that I drove very hard at uh, my last couple of um, roles. Uh, it's important that the, the coaches are learning what's happening right at the top and we drive it down and then we get involved more with the club rugby and the community rugby to drive up. So I'm really passionate about how that coaching pathway works and what I've seen with Dale, uh, he's got an exceptional exceptional talent there, working closely with Paul Carrozza in terms of the talent ID there. So I think there are some clues that I've got from the past that can help connect that better because the pathway is best informed by coaches, I think, and players then relate to what we do at the Reds way, and hopefully some of that can permeate down to that level. So it's a very important. I'm, I'm passionate about those coaches in golf, and I like my academy players to be involved with the first team as much as possible. The wider that gap is from our number one player to that number 60 player is in the academy, the less effective we are. And I need that to become tighter and stronger, and Dale's going to be a massive, massive part to play in that. You might have already been asked this before, but the um, divide between union, league, you're a former league player, is there a temptation to start looking at 
maybe young talent around the southeast that you could maybe bring across, or is it too early days yet? Yeah, Kev said I was too slow to be on the wing uh, for the Broncos now, so that's gone for me. No, I, look, it's always important to look at all talent, I think, and um, if there's something there, we'll look at it. But you know, I want to first be focused on what's in our, our rugby union pathways here. Uh, as I say, I'm, I'm still learning to get my head around here. Uh, you know, I, I'm still. I'm watching relief games at the moment on telly and I'm, I'm thinking, oh, why aren't you going through the ball? I, I'm sort of t really removed from the game a fair bit, but enjoy watching it still. But yeah, we'll, we'll keep our, you know, with Sam and myself, we'll keep our eye out for good talent. But really I'm focused on, uh, uh, on our local pathways here at the moment. Um, we certainly will always look out and if there's a good enough player to come in, we'll go for it for sure. But uh, you know, that's why I'm excited about the Challenger series and the uh, Panasonic uh, Wild Night series that's coming up because I get to work with our Reds players that are here and aren't on international duty and I get the chance to work with some really good young uh, club players. Um, that I, you know, we saw a great feast out here at Ballymore last weekend and uh, I've got some of those guys to work with over the next five or six weeks. Just one more from me. Certainly. The two All Blacks that you recently signed, Alex and Geoffrey, are there any more kind of signings on the horizon that you're really hoping to announce soon? Um, well, Jeffrey was in here the other day. He's, he's, a, he's a force of nature. He's a great guy. He'll be great for the place um, and great to see. I think he's going to North. Is that right, Sam? He's going to join the club there. So as a, we're trying to really make sure we connect those things in the game as well. Alex is going to come over very shortly and he's going to be uh, with uh, Sunnybank. Uh, but um, in terms of future signings, uh, we're keeping our eye out. Uh, whether that's... Uh, some room to work with, with someone who's not in the local system or we will all come from the local system. Um, those couple of positions we're still sorting out and we may make some decisions in the future about that. There will be an announcement probably over next week that we have signed a, a really exciting young back rower um, uh, that would probably be out in the next week or so. Sam, is that correct? Yep, so, uh, so we will have one other signing there and maybe a couple more before the year's out. You can announce it now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to take Tom's uh, thunder here, you know what I mean, he's, he, he's, he keeps me in line, you know what I mean, I, even now, everything I've said, I've had to say five times in the last two weeks, you know what I mean, before I get here, so, uh, no, all good, thanks, Tom. Yeah. Just, uh, just one more for me, uh, throwing out, uh, not throwing out, putting in, holding, holding the crystal ball um, with what you know of Northern Rugby, uh, are, um, are we in for a hell of an exciting ride, um, ride during this World Cup period, and what's your predictions? Uh, it, it's, it is going to be some wild games, I think. Um, I don't want to go too far away from the, what we're about here today, yeah. but I, I think it's going to be an exciting competition. Uh, France have to be in, in a sort of a favourites area being a home World Cup, but there's a lot of teams that can win this cup, and uh, it's, I, I, I'm going to enjoy it. Uh, the hardest thing, I think, is the timeline now. We have to watch it in the middle of the night, don't we? Yeah, so we might have some bleary eyes over the next month or so, but uh, it'll be worth watching, and, and you know, we all hope that the Wallabies go well as well. So I'm um, looking forward to it. Beautiful. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks Dom. Guys. Thanks, Kieran. Yeah, yeah. What's a cutaway shot?